Hi guys, and welcome to Rufus and Doofus. I know it's been a long time since you've heard from me, and uh, trust me when I tell you that I miss, I missed very much putting up videos and letting you know what was going on with my life. Actually, not only with my life, but my life with Rufus, and how much we were enjoying ourselves after having joined the winds. Well, I'm sure that you've heard by now uh, from Patrick and some other sources that I had a bit of a uh, a traumatic experience and I'm going to share that with you what happened uh, I'm not going to get into too much detail right now uh, unless you guys leave comments and want to know the details and what happened but to make a long story short <coughs> uh, when we were in Roosevelt uh, the first day that we were there actually I started to experience a pain in my right leg and I determined from the feeling of the pain uh, the cold leg and uh, the the deepness of a pain I determined that I had a or I thought I had a blood clot which is exactly what it turned out to be now I waited a little too long for whatever reason I'm not going to blame it on anything, uh, Rufus, me, whatever, but I wanted to get the move done. We only had one day to make the move to get up to Roosevelt, and I didn't want to end up either not going and left alone at the boondiking site we were at, which would have been not fun at all. So I followed the group or made sure I got up to Roosevelt and was hoping for the best. Well, the best didn't happen, and uh, um, I needed to get attention. So at that point there I made a, a request to the gang. I told them what was going on and uh, we needed to get to a hospital. So uh, one of the gals volunteered to drive me down to the hospital and I was admitted at the Globe Hospital and because of the nature of what had happened to me uh, the procedure was a little bit more involved than what they could handle there. So what's the next step? The next step was a helicopter ride. I've only been on a helicopter twice. Uh, neither experience was great, but this was definitely worse because I was being airlifted to another hospital. So I was airlifted to the Desert Manor Hospital, and they immediately started to do some procedures. One of them that I want to share with you, um, because it affected me so badly and scared me so badly, was when they, uh, when I got there, they thought I was having a heart attack, and they shoved a tube down my throat, I forget, incubation or something they call it. I'm not a doctor, I don't know all the verbiage, but that's what I think happened. Well, long story short, I woke up, which I wasn't supposed to do with that tube in my throat, and I uh, was adamant that I was going to get it out of there, and I was trying to grab at it and such, and they wouldn't let me in. I was trying to write notes and it was terrible. I mean, I was actually, when you have a something that's impairing your breathing like that and you're out of control with your hands bound and such, they create a lot of stress in your brain to the point where I still have uh, nightmares that are unbelievable because I'll wake up thinking that that tube is in my train and or in my throat and, and I go to reach for it and fortunately there's nothing there so I immediately go from you know a million heartbeats a minute to normal again and thank God that I was only dreaming that part so that was really nasty there and what they did after that is they uh, <clears throat> were able to get me into a procedure where they addressed the the uh, clot that was causing the problem and that was done by a really neat cardiologist, Dr. Faj or something. can't pronounce his name, but we became friends. And he was very optimistic and very modern thinking. Not the kind of guy that you would think would be a cardiologist. I mean, this guy here you would have fun with, you know, sitting at Hooters, pound down some beers and some chicken wings. And I'm not saying, that, you know, he does that. I think he's a cardiologist. It's not healthy. But that's the impression I got. So they got the... Um, the blood clot taken care of and the next complication which was called uh, um, compartment um, syndrome 
And apparently what happens there is that uh, a pressure builds up in the compartments or areas between the muscles, and it can cause death if it's serious enough, but it def definitely uh, can cause tissue, serious, uh, tissue damage, and that's what happened to me. I'm trying to smile. I'm happy, guys. I made it through all this crap, so guess what? Be happy, be happy, because I made it, all right? I wouldn't be happy if I didn't make it, but so far I made it. I just wish Rufus was here to share the enjoyment of me making it. <laughs> so, okay, so let's move on. When they did this fasciotomy, and if any of you guys want to want me to elaborate and post some pictures that are really gross of what a fasciotomy looks like, um, I will do that. Uh, and share with you what you can imagine was a bucket full of pain, a bucket full that was just constant at day and night and was not uh, alleviated by any dosage of morphine they decided to give me, which just never, never seemed to be enough. But thank God what they did give me alleviated the pain a bit. It took it from a 10 down to like a 7. And 7 and 10 is a huge amount of pain. It's the difference between screaming in agony and at least being able to lay there and say, oh my God, this hurts. So that's that. Now, after having done that, and you see the pictures, if you do in fact request them, some of you probably aren't into that stuff, but you will see that the wound was very, very nasty and was obviously going to require quite a bit of time to heal and uh, there were going to be many surgeries to clean the dead muscle that had formed there. And every time they took a little dead muscle, that mean that I had less live muscle to work with. So that foot uh, is the one that's giving me the problem. The, he the healing has taken place on the fasciotomy uh, intervention. The skin graft has gone very well. And it looks like it's taken with no problem at all. So I'm in rehab, um, trying to do uh, rehab exercises. The place that I was at was very nice, and they did a good job. And it was more regimented, like a hospital. This place here is a group home, and it's not quite the same thing. Uh, trying to get your drugs on schedule is not easy. Uh, it's just way different, way more, a lot more lax and a lot more rules because you really have to respect the family that's in here. Uh, I'll tell you something about this situation which you're probably not aware of but can make your life very, very uh, stressful and if it's not handled and if you're not lucky enough to get well fast enough, you can become very, very financially dependent or scorned, or broke, or whatever the word is, but it ain't pretty, and I don't want to find myself there. Um, now that we're talking about finances, yes, I have incurred quite a few expenses that I did not expect. Medicaid, or not Medicaid, but Medicare covers 20%, and the other 20% I am liable for. As you can imagine, just for giggles, let's say it was a $10 $10,000 expense. Hospital or the Medicare would pay $8,000 and I'd be liable for $20,000. So, um, if you guys know any tricks or trees out there or if I'm saying something wrong, please correct me. But from what I'm seeing and what I'm getting and what I'm being told, um, the bills are about 20% of the entire procedure. So, um, I'm probably going to need to really tighten my belt there and hope for some real luck because I, if I don't get out of this rehab place that I'm at now, uh, I'm going to be in big trouble after a month of paying here. So uh, that's going to lead me to another uh, aspect of this race, race video. I just want to make you aware of some things. Um, I am going to be starting a Patreon account. Uh, I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for it. Uh, I wasn't ever really intending on starting something like that. But I am making tremendous efforts to make the videos. They were always difficult to do, but I enjoyed doing them. Now the level of difficulty has gone up quite a bit because of the handicap that I'm going to have. I don't know how, 
how uh, complete the healing is going to be. So please expect to see a Patreon account. I will do my best to keep it pretty, you know, simple. Um, and remember that having a Patreon account doesn't affect anybody that doesn't want to contribute to the Patreon account. So all of you can continue to watch for free and some of you can continue to watch and uh, donate what you think it's worth uh, for that segment of video and you'll be getting special attentions and rewards uh, from me uh, because of the patron account and your support for it. I hope that I'll be able to keep up with the support that I have to give back and I don't think that'll be a problem because the more support the easier it's going to be for me to survive and that's going to be my primary task is to make sure that everything promised will be delivered. So important part there so you know I should have a big red asterisk there to let you know. Um, I don't want to beat this thing to death. Uh, I, I did want to share with you what happened. Now I'm at the point right now where I would say I'm at 90 percent the recovery rate for what's happened to me and that's my reading on it. Some of the doctors feel I'm further ahead but I just don't see the, the anything happening without reduction in this what I consider to be uh, an incapacitating pain. So, But I'm doing my best with it and um, I thought maybe some of you would like to come along for the journey because I know a lot of you have been so supportive your prayers, your thoughts, your concerns, um, your suggestions have all uh, been played in my mind over and over. I really didn't have anything else to do, so I did a lot of uh, thinking about what I was going to do, how people felt about me, and whether it was going to be worthwhile for me to continue the channel. And I got to tell you, right now, I think it's worthwhile. I've had so many requests of uh, my my health status and such. Now, um, by the way, that tube they stuffed down my throat ruined my voice box. Yeah, that's something I got to live with. I don't know if it get better or not. So in any case, let's move on. Uh, I really sincerely hope to be out of here uh, in the time frame that I need to be. And I'm hoping to get into the rig and I'm also hoping to pick up uh, Rufus and continue our journey. There is one more uh, fly in the ointment, and that happens to be the season that this has taken place in. Right now in Arizona, it's like 120 degrees. Somebody who's now 100% uh, s up to snuff health-wise stands a good chance of, of getting uh, hurt badly by the temperature outside, especially if something doesn't go as planned. If I go to the RV, and I move it out into traffic and, you know, peppers on there, and all of a sudden it breaks down. I can't survive very long in 120 degrees with a dog uh, and no air conditioning. So it's all going to depend on that. I know I'm being pessimistic, thinking it's going to break, but guess what? You know, Murphy's Law has been following me pretty, pretty well, and he's been uh, relentless. So, yes, I'm going to take it extra special careful. Excuse me while I have a drink. Gin and tonic. By the time I finish that, I'll be in Never Never Land. No, it's not gin and tonic, but it's 89 cents for, for a big soft drink like that down the road. And Devin brought me the cup. She bought it generously. Uh, didn't want anything for it. She filled it up. Every time she came, she had one of the 89 cents thing and bingo, filled it right up to the top. So that's a shout out to Devin, my friend, uh, who, by the way, is beginning her version, her trip today. Uh, she's going to be living in a, in a camper van and she's going to go sightseeing and she's got it all set up and I'm so proud of her and I definitely am going to follow her uh, consistently and be of as much help as I can be. Uh, believe it or not, even being sick here and laying on my back and some of the talks we've had, I was able to help her save some substantial money uh, with things that she either wasn't aware of 
or she had been convinced needed to be done on the RV by less than honest people. You gotta watch them, especially, uh, I shouldn't have said RV, but just vehicle. Um, they, they, it's, it seems to be a very crooked world out there. You gotta be very careful, especially if you're a female and they can sense that you don't know anything about mechanics. Us guys have a little advantage over that, and I think we've seen enough that 99% of the time it's going to be a scam. Unfortunately, that 1% where you needed it, maybe you missed something yourself and then you got a problem. But in this case, we didn't miss anything, and she brought it someplace else to uh, second opinion, and turned out I was right. So money saved there. You know, you can buy a lot with a $1,000. And I thought it was more than that by the end of the day. So what a great gal. If you have an opportunity to follow her, uh, please do so. I don't know if she has a channel up yet, but maybe after this video here and a shout out to her and what her potential would be for visitors, maybe she'll start a channel, okay? She doesn't like to have her picture taken. So I suggested that she just do, uh, you know, her thing and show you things and go places and not show her picture. She doesn't have to show her picture at all. And I think you're going to really enjoy the fact that um, there'll be no distraction from somebody coughing, sneezing while they're looking at you. It'll probably be more planned out than my videos. So I recommend it highly. Now, with that, I want to tell you that I'm still on some drugs. Uh, I'm on morphine right now. I'm allowed it every four hours for the pain in my leg, which is right about every four hours, it wears off and I need it. Um, it's doing a good job. So I'm going to continue taking it. I'm trying when I don't need it, when I think I can get through the night or through those four hours without pain, <clears throat> I'm trying not to take it. And I've been successful. The trouble is that once you don't take it and all of a sudden you need it, wow, I mean, it takes it a while to catch up and it, it really pounds you, you know, for that for that initial uh, intake. So what else did I want to tell you? Oh, I have gotten so, so many cards and well wishes and I, I just can't tell you how many I got. And they, they arrive all at once because I have a mail service. So I get this big pile of, of cards and I go through them and I savor every one of them. I read the words over and over. Not necessarily the same card when I open it, but the next day I'll start from scratch and read them all over again, just so that I try and associate the names correctly and, uh, and, and, and enjoy the words. Uh, some of them are absolutely outrageously good, not commercially made, just cards fold in half with the most wonderful worlds, words that come out of them. And uh, I don't have the ability to put words together like that. But I can tell you, and I'm not ashamed, that I've had a lot of tears roll out of my eyes uh, due to those cards. And uh, really, okay, I um, hope you didn't lose that, but my battery's dying here. It was never fully charged. So I'm going to finish up. I'm going to wish you all uh, a wonderful uh, holiday or travel and especially be safe in this extraordinarily high heat. All right, I'm going to do my best to be safe. And if anybody can help me that's in the area, uh, please, please reach out to me. Uh, either comments here or emails, whatever. But I do need help. Uh, hooking up, um, whatever, following me out of town. So make sure everything's fine. Uh, even lightening the load. I have a lot of things for sale on the RV. Some of them would be useful for newer RVers and some of them might not. I do have a, a hobby that I've carried with me and it's a small wood turning lathe that I really enjoyed and I have some pen material so you can turn pens. You don't have to buy any kits and I have all the hardware and chisels. And I'd be willing to let that go just to lighten the load of my rig and other things too. So please, uh, if you're local, please get a hold of me. Uh, let's see what we can get done 
get me back on the road and I won't be a nuisance anymore. I'll just take you great places. And a lot of them are going to be eating because I sure miss food. Hospital food got me to drop 58 pounds. Can you believe that? I'm just a little toothpick here. A little shorty nurse could knock me right over. So we got to get back up there. Yeah, oh, yeah. And we're going to start eating a lot of protein. So I'm overdoing it here. Let this video end. And uh, let me reiterate one thing. As much crying as I've done since this started, and as much as uh, I've thought that things were never, ever, ever going to look up, I got to tell you, I stuck with it. Um, I wasn't happy with the Lord, with his procedure, but now that it's all said and done and I have more to do, and it's going to be painful, but the Lord will take care of you. So in the end, no matter what, no matter what, be happy, happy, happy. He knows what you need. He will give it to you, but it's going to take time and effort on your part. And with that, I'm going to leave you with a I love all of you.